the trans topic like just became really, really hot. There's news stories constantly about it and stuff going viral and like people wanted the opinion of someone that they felt like wasn't crazy. You're like the complete opposite of a radical activist, like stuff that even trans people might be like, whoa. Gender dysphoria is the disorder that trans people are diagnosed with. It's the disconnect between like how you feel and how you look and wanting to be a different gender. We should destigmatize mental health and talk about it like, but it is why I transition. All right guys, I'm kind of picking up my own place today. Uh, I know vlogging is not really a thing. I don't think don't I don't think people are watching vlogging, but anyways, I'm trying to like organize the best I can. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is kind of the situation I have going on over here in the main entryway. Um, I don't really know like shoe situation how to organize, but I did just get. Oh, I I just don't know to vlog anymore. I'm like kind of the worst vlogger. But I did just get a new kind of a shoe. You know what I call it? A shoe flag. Like, hey, take your shoes off. Yeah, you're in my home. Like, here's the thing. My podcast room is literally like like arm, like two arms length away. If I had one more arm, I could be in this. So it's like, it's an entry ray, right? It's, you can just go in there. It's fine. I have the ways come. Everyone leaves their shoes on. Even I wear my shoes in there. There's like weird stuff underneath my couch. That's very odd. Um, so it's like not a big deal. And honestly, like, oh, here's the thing. If you come into my house with shoes, I'm probably not gonna tell you to take them off because that's, I don't know why, it's awkward. It's awkward. I have to send W9s out to, like, I mean, they, they're people who work for me, they're also my friends, which I guess I gave them so I should W9 them, but it's like one of those weird things I feel weird. It's like, hey, I gotta, I'm gonna tax you. I'm gonna, I mean, that's normal. If you have a company and people work for you and you pay for them, it's, it's normal. So I don't know why I feel weird about it, but this is what I got. I got it off Etsy. It says, please remove your Balenciaga. Shout out to Calgator. Um, which by the way, Oh my god, what did I type up over there? Kelly still works for me. Um, she's more on a part-time basis now because she got a job because um like here's the thing, I only need a part-time assistant. Like I don't need her every single day, as you guys know, or as you guys don't know, because I don't vlog. Like so, like literally sometimes like five days out of the week I do nothing. When I start getting busier, I need more help, but my mom's also there to kinda of help me out. So yeah. So I don't know, maybe no one's asking, but <laughs> so I feel like this is a good way to be like, hey, put your shoes there. But also at the same time. Like, it's cute that it says, please remove your Balenciagas, but, like, I don't want to cover them with my Yeezys there. So, I guess people just kind of know, like, hey, put your shoes there. And, like, these other shoes, I guess I can just take on upstairs. I guess the Barbie team is could go there, too. Because these are kind of, like, pretty house shoes. Not house shoes. I, I take them, like, when I want to take the trash. I got to clean, clean off my Yeezys, too, because it's no cute. You don't want to see, like, a recent obsession I have. I post-made it. I didn't realize I post-made it this twice, but... I have an obsession. Let me, let me just show you real quick. Okay, I'm not going anywhere, guys. I'm not editing. Here we go. 2016 Trish used to buy double Prada purses and didn't realize. Now I buy double, <laughs> double Charmin. <laughs> and don't realize I am absolutely obsessed with toilet paper. Um, I don't know what this is. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with it. But I honestly can't get enough. I remember there was a joke about literally like I have worked toilet paper. I always feel, and I don't know like if anyone else feels this way. I don't know if it's because I I spent I would say I spent half my life poor. I guess not poor. Maybe just like less than less than the average household, right? Especially when I got as an adult, like. Basically, if my mom and sister hadn't moved to California, I literally would still be, like, I literally slept on the streets. Like, I know I don't really talk about it because I don't, so many people already question the authenticity of my stories, like, if they're real or not. And I, and I get it, trust me, I get it, because there are so crazy. Um, I haven't even shared, there was literally a person living in my apartment, my last apartment, like, he was living in the storage space, and he was sneaking in, and literally nothing could be done about it. And, like, that sounds crazy and like i'm gonna start talking about it because like i'm like eff it like i'm gonna talk about it and bring awareness to this especially the building and the police and like all this stuff like that and like i like the police i have a good rapport with the police right now um i dealt i've been dealing with stuff that was like happened months ago and so like i like them i feel like they do do their job i feel like they probably get overwhelmed because like i mean obviously there's lots going on okay like obviously it's someone living in my heart maybe they maybe some, it just depends on what kind of detective you get um, it depends on if they care about you, if they don't care about you. Like, some cops will judge me and be like, oh, it's like rich bitch. Like, if I got my Lamborghini stolen, the first set of cops I got were really awful. The detective literally didn't care. Like, literally didn't believe me. Literally were like, well, that's weird. Like, he just stole, like, no one steals a Lamborghini. And I was like, well, he stole a Lamborghini. 
And then like I got another set that were really nice and sympathetic and they were like, oh my God, you should definitely have like a cop like watching over you or like a security guard watching over you. Like it just kind of depends. And like this recent, I had a recent theft dealing with from my old place and like this detective's like really on it and really nice and like asking me tons of questions and like helps, like makes me always feel at ease when I ask questions. Anyways, where was that tangent on? All of that to say, like I don't share a lot of my stories anymore. Um, but like, yeah, in the past, like I did sleep on the street literally on the street for maybe two weeks um i was able to finally get my car it was towed and i was finally able to get out towing and then i lived in that for like two weeks and then i was able to get a place like i stayed with a friend then after that for a while and then i got my own place so like it was really scary and like i don't know if you guys remember like if you guys if you guys go back to my old videos like yes i lived in this like really shitty apartment that had no doorknob for a while and then like there was like a lull there was maybe like a three month lull and that was the three months that like i was homeless i was on the street i was living in my car and then i kind of got my own place and then well i lived with the guy got my own place that old place tender to be a total scam like i was renting a room like a kind of like a room i guess but it was like a little like outhouse kind of i guess it was a room i don't know um and then i ended up like literally overdosing pissing on the floor my dad finding me after like a year of not talking taking me to riverside county hospital where i was born ironically and that was kind of my like rebirth it's like so weird but an album name rebirth but it has nothing to do with that time of my life but like it was really crazy because that was the hospital i was born in and like maybe that's common for people who like grew up in small cities or people born in a small city or something but like riverside california is very random one i was, I was born there and then i moved away like when i was three and my dad like on and off lived in the inland empire area but for me to go like all that time and then like at 18 or 19 or 20 i don't even know how that was 19 maybe um to go back to the riverside hospital because of that like that was crazy and that really was kind of like my rebirth i definitely struggled after that i mean i still became a stripper i still like got into drugs like i still struggled i guess but that was like i think my ultimate low because that was like the lowest of, like obviously being homeless and like sleeping on the streets and like literally escorting for you know five dollars like it's dark and i feel like if i were to be honest and do like a full autobiography like that would be amazing i don't think i could ever do that because oh god i want to get like so real oh my god this turned into like i was gonna be like this is cute a little toilet paper uh -huh, my search addiction i hoard toilet paper uh -huh. um to getting down to the roots of it but i guess i guess i i like okay maybe maybe this will help you guys understand okay perfect example i have black braid mcr pants i mean they're available at hot topic now so it's not like they're vintage or old school or anything but perfect example is um like a lot of people will notice that i tend okay a couple things that i regress to being like for me 2006 2005 2006 is 15 so 2005 is like my 15 15 is like the year there's two traumatic years for me and specifically 15 was a very traumatic year so that was a year a lot of shit happened and went down so for me i reg sorry my sister was literally calling me um but yeah, like that was like a really, that was like the, the, the year, my last year of, I guess, innocence, I guess you could say, like, yeah, I don't, I don't really go into it because like I said, I can never write a tell all and be honest about it. And I kind of even, like I said, I tell pretty much a lot of my story here on YouTube and I'm so open and free to talk about hooking and escorting and stripping because I was doing that as an adult and i wasn't i don't consider that traumatizing part of my life and there was a part where i was still a minor i mean 15 to you know 18 is still a minor that was it really really hard for me and really hard for me to talk about and um like part of me doesn't i don't talk about it because it is hard for me to remember there's certain things traumatic that will that have kind of come back but kind of not and it almost seems, this is so dark and deep, holy shit. And I, I, I need to go back to therapy because like I wasn't even getting into this in therapy at all. But I really liked my therapist and I need to go back to it because there's just a lot happening at that time. I was moving and like all this shit. But music. So like sometimes I don't even like remember. Like there'll be memories that'll come and it'll seem like it probably seems to you guys like it's made up. Like, oh, she's not getting her story right. Her street. Like it, but I, I will remember. And it, it seems almost like, I don't want to say a dream. That's like bad. Almost like a nightmare. Almost like this isn't real, like it didn't happen to me. And, but not only traumatic events, but like that whole time. So high school, specifically when I moved to this town called Pecatonica, it was like a small town. I had, you know, my high schools were weird. I like quit my first school freshman year and then I was like homeschooled. Or I came to California, hated that, but I started homeschooling in California. So I went to public school in California, 
homeschooling. This is all, again, in the high school age range. Um, then I went back, was trying to homeschooling, but I wasn't being schooled. And then I got, I kind of got stuck in my way into like my second, my sophomore year, I guess you could say of high school without even doing really my freshman year of high school um, because of just my age and like the school system wasn't that great or whatever, whatever, break it down again. But um, yeah, so then I was kind of there and I don't even remember, like it's weird. And maybe other people feel this way. So maybe it's not just like specific to being traumatized. And I, I'm not saying my trauma was like the worst trauma, but I don't know if this makes sense. Like high school it doesn't, is not a memory to me. Like I will have bits and pieces. I think I remember, I think that's how it went sort of things. Even when I go to visit it again, like I'm like, I think I remember this hallway. I think I remember this classroom. I know it's like weird and not to say like, I'm like, what is that called? I don't know what it's called. Like my memory has been wiped. I like, I don't like, it's not that. <laughs> um, it's just like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It just doesn't feel like I went to high school. It's like, it literally isn't even me. Like even when I think of those memories or something, you know what I mean? Like, I, of course I remember like, I'm trying to think of like memories I have. Like, I just don't like, I, I know I was in the school play a couple times and I, I remember quitting cause like, like two weeks before, cause I just, I couldn't do it. But like, I need to get lotion, my hands are so dry. I don't know if any of this makes sense. I'm sorry, this was like gonna be lighthearted. Like look at all the toilet paper and like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. All of that to say, like, I don't even know what I was talking about that I didn't wanna share stories from being homeless, but okay, I don't know. Shit, if you guys could redirect me and get me back on track, I would love that. But yeah, wow. Okay, I'm all, I'm like on this tangent now. Oh, okay, all of this to say, it does come back to the toilet paper. I don't know if y'all have been poor or broke before. I have been. Okay, you kind of get my story, right? And um, yeah, one of my biggest fears is not like a fear that I think about often because I know I'm a hustler. I know I can make money. I know now I'm fortunate enough that I've been established enough on social media that I can do a podcast. I can do this. Like I can parlay it into different things. I can do OnlyFans easier because I have like a, like this built in following. So I'm very, very fortunate. And even if my following decreases or whatever, like there's still like a group of people who know I am. There'll be a new group of people. Like I, I'm very, very lucky that I've somewhat established online, I guess you could say. Um, and I truly feel like you only fall out of rep relevance or even fall out of sight if you choose to like if you go away from it I feel like you know like caters and Mr. Safety and like all those people I feel like they choose to kind of maybe they're they're seeing a decline which I've I've seen on this channel on or this channel and my main channel like there's a decline right now on YouTube just in general I mean some people still kill it and views obviously like the Davids and the Tanas and all that like that like they fucking kill it like it's so but there is a decline in general I've been seeing and for me specifically there's a decline Am I like upset about it? Like for a minute, you're like, oh my God, that's so scary. But YouTube hasn't been my main source of income for a very, very long time. So it's not that, it's not as scary when I put it in perspective. Like I'm just like sitting on the floor. Should I finish organizing these? It's not that scary. See, I can't multitask though. When I, um, oh my God, this is probably the most unflattering angle for me. Just my back and my side, love that. Um, <sighs> Just so much toilet paper. Um, Lena's coming over. Uh, Lena the plug, love her name. Um, in a bit to do an OnlyFans club. But, <sighs> um, so I my weird irrational fear is that I'm gonna run out of money to buy toilet paper, and it's not even that weird or out of um out of the norm because when I was stripping and living with my mom. And Encina, my mom and sister. So basically I was still paying rent when I was living with my mom because my mom didn't have like a high paying job. My mom took care of us pretty hardcore. <laughs> I love her, always will love her. So, the first upside down, it's gonna bother some people, I'll try and turn it around. Sorry, I do not fluff either. Okay, so long story short is I used to live with my mom and Encino and there would be times, like she really did. She paid for food, she paid for, like my gas a lot of times like she basically we like shared a sugar daddy kind of in the sense like i wouldn't say we shared him it was a friend she knew that like helped me out and gave me money and she knew he did and she was fine with it because i needed help with my car payment and even the rent a lot of times but my mom would pick up the slack of food and tampons and um toilet paper and you know all stuff with for me and my sister and this is when i'm an adult right i'm like well like 22 or 23 now um so which is why I try and do so much for my mom now and I like really have retired her and like she sometimes she like wants to go back to work I'm like mom no like you know what I mean she like helps me with the posh and stuff like that here and there my posh mark but 
I really want lotion. That's what I got up to do. But there was a time when we could not afford toilet paper. And she was like, also, does anyone know? Side note, it's like slippery. I know my sister and my maids had like cleaned my floor and it's like so slippery. And I know it's like a weird thing to complain about, but it's like, I can't even go barefoot in my house because like barefoot, I'm talking it's slippery. Is there lotion in here? my little storage closet where I actually should put one of the rolls. Look, I got more toilet paper in there. <gasps> oh my God, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> I got lots of toilet paper. And I'm gonna finish the story about toilet paper if anyone still cares. Um, oh, hello, that's hella embarrassing. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go put this up in mine because I go through so much toilet paper, specifically upstairs, so. I need to little shut my hands. I don't even know what time it is. Like she's probably like on her way over here and I'm blabbing about toilet paper and a sad childhood. Childhood was not that sad. I mean, it's, it was. Oh. Do you ever hate, like I always compare. Okay, I'll let me put you guys on. Really weird bathroom experience on this bathroom floor with none other than John. If you guys want to know about that experience, I'll let you know. When John was out here around New Year's Eve time, there was some weird ass stuff happening. Is that no, oh, it's clean in this little vicinity in this bathroom on this kitchen on this kitchen floor on this bathroom floor. That's a whole story time. We're so cool. I'm so we're, we're friendly, so there's nothing. There's no bad blood and there's no bad story to it. It's just kind of funny. It's actually a funny story. It's not bad. It's weird. Every time I go in that bathroom, I think I don't ever use that bathroom. But see, I almost slipped. I almost slipped. Do you guys know why that slipped? Sorry, I know I seem manic. I'm not. I'm not even on anything. Like, I'm not on Adderall or nothing. I don't even take Adderall. I've never had Adderall. True story. I want it, but I'm scared. Um, so, all of that to say, let me finish this freaking toilet paper story because we've gone on 5,000 tangents. All of that to say, I can buy cake pop from Bath and Body Works. You know, I remember my mom's like, we really need toilet paper, and I have... She had like, she had literally zero dollars. In fact, I want to say, I don't know if it was this specific toilet paper incident, but I want to say, oh God, that feels so much better. I had even overdrawn her account by 500 because like, I don't know if it's still like this, but I remember back in the day with checking accounts, I mean, it's because we had like, we had a savings account. I don't think there was anything in the savings to be honest. I don't know. Or maybe we didn't have a savings account then. I don't even remember, but all I remember is we were able to somehow take out, let's say you had $10 left in the bank account, you could take out 500. So I would do that to my account and I would do that to my mom's account. And she knew, it's not like I was stealing, but I sometimes she like, or she would know, or she'd say it's okay, like you don't have to ask, but, and then it would just like be out. And she goes, I have literally negative money in my bank account and then we need toilet paper. Like we had no toilet paper. Um, and then I remember I like went down to my dad's one time and like didn't steal it. I'm like, dad, can I take some of this toilet paper? Because he had some, I'm like, you have so much toilet paper, can I need some? So I guess I always had this irrational fear. Like I said, not so irrational because it's like was an actual fear of like running out of toilet paper. And I think that's why I hoard clothes a lot too. It's like hard for me to get rid of clothes because I always, I've always thought this like since I was, since I started making any money, which was maybe like 22, 23, where I was able to kind of like make a large lump sum, like right, stripping, you're making like, for me, I was making like a few hundred dollars a night here and there when I worked and I was like lazy. So I like didn't even work that much, which is why I hustle so much now. But um, I was like making money and I would like, and this is when I was not doing drugs or anything. So when I was like young, 18, and I was like escorting, I was like doing drugs and like I was going to all drugs. But then I was like starting to able to buy clothes and I was like so scared I was never gonna be able to afford new clothes again. So I would like keep on to all these jeans and keep on to all these shoes. Cause I was like, oh, I may never, and I'm still sort of like that, but also like learning to live more minimalistic lifestyle. I know I, I know I still shop a lot, but I'm trying to be more minimal, minimalistic. But anyways, all of that to say, <laughs> That is why I love toilet paper so much and I buy it in hordes and same thing with like hand soap and toothpaste. Um, I think I've showed you guys my closet upstairs like with all the toiletries from Target. Um, was the power out? That was weird. How, was a power outage? That's so bizarre. Hmm. Oh, there's something plugged in there. I don't know, man. That was weird, wasn't it? Weird. Okay, now I'm a little creeped out, so I gotta go check my little circuit breakers. But the lights were on. Very 
doors on? That's so weird. All right, well, we're going to end. We're going to go investigate that. I can't really take you guys with me because now I have lotion all on my hands. I'm going to finish watching. Um, oh, God. I'm going to finish watching Phil DeFranco, which I kind of called myself out because I said I didn't like him on the H3 podcast. But let's just be real. Let's just be real. And I'll be real with myself. And I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm going to be real with the guys that hate me too uh, or love to hate me. If you are a hater of someone, you're a fan. And, like, I'm saying that because, yeah, I'm kind of a hater on Phil DeFranco. I don't really like the way, the way his, like, wife treated me 10 years ago. I mean, I'm over it, whatever. I don't really like his attitude. I don't like his stance that, like, if you don't agree with him, you're wrong. I like, there's a lot of things I hate about him, but I watch him every freaking day. And there's something kind of, like, relaxing about it and his podcast. I have both tabs open. I literally have Disgusting YouTube Mom Exposed right now. And I also have the Rhett and Link podcast. So I have two of his channels open, so yeah if you're a hater you're you're an actual fan because you can only hate someone i can only hate philip defranco for all those reasons if i watch him and know that about him i'm trying to think of someone i don't like casey neistat literally i've never watched a video of his in his life i can say i'm a little bit of a hater of him in real life because i feel like he's a little misogynistic just how i've seen and it's that's a very very loose assumption or summary that i've gotten from him because um uh what do you call it like it was just like very i've only seen him a couple times very briefly and he's always been like he's always acknowledged just the boys and not even me and when i was dating jason like he would never acknowledge like me and like that's cool maybe he just didn't like me or whatever but i just never got like that so that was so maybe that's like a hater that i'm not a fan of that was a weird example because i'm trying to think of like another creator um mr beast i don't think he has haters but <laughs> I think he actually only does well good for YouTube and good for people. I think he just gives money away all the time. Um, but I don't watch him. So it's so weird. I gotta check that out. Um, but yeah, I don't watch him, so I don't I can't hate on him. I'm not a fan, I don't hate him. Oh, so I'm trying to think of like um I don't know, I'm trying to think of like popular people I don't watch. Not to say that I'm cool or anything, but Emma Chamberlain. Okay, but that's another one too because I knew kind of her in real life a little bit, but I never hated on her. It was just more like I didn't want to hang out with her because she was underage at the time and I felt weird about it when my friends at the time were hanging out with her. But I don't watch her video. I don't know, so I can't hate on her. That's such a bad... Who do I... I don't know. Lily Singh, I guess. Like Another one that I hate watch. It sounds so bad, but I guess I'm a fan because I watch Grace Helbig. I had a weird encounter with her or she had a bad encounter with fans at VidCon. I personally saw years and years and years ago. I'm like talking 2013 to 2014 so long ago and I thought she was so rude and she was so I might still be up there and I thought she was so like she ignored fans even though there wasn't that many people following her. She was rude to my sister. Like there were so many like bad things that I always had like a bad taste and so I feel like we've always had this beef. Um, but you know what? Sometimes I, sometimes I watch her videos. Sometimes. So I guess I more, I more watch to be like, oh, like she's so annoyed. I don't know. Why do we watch people we are annoyed by? I mean, literally, I feel like that's all that. No, I, that's a lie. I think that's all that's left. I think there's like half and half. I think people literally watch me because they're annoyed by me. They hate me. They like can't believe a person like me exists, I guess, even though I don't think I'm that crazy or controversial anymore. But, and then I think I have genuine, like, <laughs> like people who actually like me because they do come to my shows and they're very sweet and um so yeah that's an interesting question i'll leave that up to you guys on there and that there why do we watch people we hate or we hate watch because i know a ton of people that hate watch other people i guess it's entertainment i guess it makes you maybe feel better about yourself maybe you're like oh, thank god i'm not like that there's probably multiple answers for me like i said philip defranco annoys me and like but i guess there are some endearing parts which maybe that's that maybe that's me there's a lot of people that watch because I annoy them and like, oh, they kind of like can't stand me. But then they're like, there are some endearing parts of Trish or maybe not. I don't know. Um, or maybe they watch me the way I watch Grace Helbig. I'm like, damn, she used to be so popping and she had this e-show. Now she's kind of like not popping off like Tyler Oakley too. Maybe people watch me that reason. I never popped off like them though. So at least they had a, a heyday, a glory day. Um, but yeah, I hope that didn't come across hatery. <laughs> Probably did. I'm going to put this back in my bathroom. This is really good. Confetti at Cake Pop from Bath and Body Works. All right, guys. This is fun, right? A little chit chat, a little chitty chat. I need to literally go shave my puss and I'll see you guys in a bit. <laughs>